Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here with a Hurricane Matthew update, 1105 Eastern Time. The latest visible satellite imagery showing that the eye made landfall over the western Tiburon Peninsula here in Haiti. The eye filling in as it interacts with land, but the core of the hurricane still very much intact, and it is moving across now, eventually towards the extreme eastern tip of Cuba, and then eventually into the southwest Atlantic over here, where conditions are very favorable for reintensification. Looking at the very latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center, the winds are still around 145 miles per hour. Uh, however, the pressure probably has come up, indicating 950 millibars right now. Uh, the changes with this advisory that are very important, Hurricane Watch now in effect uh, from Deerfield Beach, Florida, to the Volusia Brevard County line. And then down in the Florida Keys, Tropical Storm Watch in effect from the Seven Mile Bridge in the Florida Keys northward to south of Deerfield Beach. And we can see what that looks like here on the map, on the graphic. Here's your Hurricane Watch area in the pink, Lake Okeechobee in the Tropical Storm Watch, and from south of Deerfield into the Keys, the Tropical Storm Watch also. The very latest in the track guidance uh, shows us a move into southeast Cuba through the Bahamas and then eventually off the coast of Florida, probably far enough off the coast to keep hurricane conditions away, maybe in gusts, but if this pulls any farther to the east, it'll definitely spare the coast of Florida here from any major impacts from the wind. However, heavy rainfall and the beach erosion, I can't emphasize enough about this, the beach erosion is going to be substantial. And of course, any wobble to the west outside of the center line here would bring hurricane conditions closer to the coastline. So we need to keep that in mind as well. As far as folks down in extreme southeast Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, etc., and the Keys proper, it looks like this will be far enough away. The core of the hurricane far enough away as it continues off to the northwest to keep the worst conditions away from the big metropolitan areas, uh, probably even West Palm Beach south. But that can change. That's what the cone of uncertainty is all about. And even though Miami, uh, which is right here, is just outside that error cone, sometimes it can deviate out of there and you can have problems. So, you know, take it with, I don't want to say a grain of salt because it's more probably uh what's the word i'm looking for um exact than that and uh, that this will be the track but you know the certainty level is pretty high this close in we're talking about the next 48 hours or so so miami fort lauderdale looking a lot better that's what it comes down to now farther up the coast uh myrtle beach charleston wilmington etc up here could have a direct hit from this system the brunswick county beaches this is still four days away and uh, the five-day position up here off the coast of New Jersey, still showing it as a hurricane. That is very interesting. So hurricane conditions may be felt as far as the uh, New York Bight area up here. So we're going to have to watch this very closely as this evolves. Very interesting changes with uh, this track indicating much more of an impact to the east coast of the United States uh, rather than this sort of sharp turn and out to sea. I want to see if the discussion has been released yet. Uh, refresh the screen, live, real time here. Yep, the forecast discussion is out, so I'm going to read it, and uh, we'll kind of know all this together. Uh, so they say, let's see who the forecaster is. First of all, it's Lixian Avila. Uh, he's been there for a while. I know him. Uh, great guy, too. He's from Cuba. The eye of Hurricane Matthew was quite distinct when it made landfall uh, near Le Angeles, Angles, I don't know how you say that, my apologies, at 11 UTC this morning. But since that time, the eye has become obscured on conventional imagery. A reconnaissance plane measured step frequency microwave radiometer. See, I can say that, that little four-letter acronym. They call it Smurf Winds, but... It actually means stepped frequency microwave radiometer. Uh, so anyway, recon plane measured winds of 118 knots earlier today, but the entire area has not been sampled yet by the plane. On this basis, the intensity kept at 125 knots. 
Some slight weakening could occur, et cetera, as it interacts with the land. We understand that. Uh, then the environment is certainly favorable to maintain Category 4 for the next two days. Some weakening is anticipated by the end of the forecast period due to an increase of the wind shear. We will have to keep a close eye on that. If it doesn't come to pass, we could have a much stronger hurricane heading for North Carolina and vicinity uh, than we were thinking yesterday or last night even. Radar fixes from Cuba and satellite data indicate that Matthew is moving toward the north or 360 degrees at about 9 knots. The hurricane is being steered by the flow around the western edge of the subtropical ridge. Now we have talked about that for the, next, for the last few days, so no surprises there. Continuing on, most of the global models build the ridge westward, uh, and this pattern should force the hurricane to turn toward the northeast across the Bahamas and into the waters just east of Florida. Beyond three days, the ridge is forecast to shift eastward, allowing Matthew to turn northward and then northeastward. Users are reminded not to focus on the exact center since strong winds, heavy rainfall, and a dangerous storm surge will extend far from the center. Most of the models show a strong hurricane near the east coast of Florida in the southeast United States from days 2 through 5. So that last sentence there indicating the heightened uh, risk to the east coast of the United States, including the east coast peninsula of Florida. So there you have it. That's the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Watches are now in effect, uh, hurricane and tropical storm. We will monitor this as it moves through the Bahamas. Let's do not discount and overlook those folks. That's what's going to be coming next, and I will address the impacts expected there. I think it's pretty obvious. Strong hurricane, storm surge, wind, etc. just not a good time uh, again for the Bahamas this year. You know, Joaquin was there a year ago. It's unbelievable, bad luck, but hey, sometimes the patterns favor clusters of hurricanes in certain areas, and it looks like we're entering into that even if it's last year and this year, in and around the Bahamas, and, then, and now apparently along the east coast of the U.S. Will that continue? Uh, we'll worry about all that later. Right now, Matthew is plenty for us to uh, deal with. By the way, there is Tropical Storm Nicole, and that'll pretty much be the last time I mention it, because it'll be of absolutely no consequence whatsoever. Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in. And I'll have another video update for you later this afternoon or early this evening.